Hello, my name is Will Scott, and I'm the chief inventor and the president of Dynamo. I'm here today with some exciting news to talk to you about your new cyclone cane and tell you all about it. When you get a cyclone cane, this is what you get. It comes just like this. So the upper part will be wrapped, like you see it here. And when you grab it, all you do is pull the plastic off the top of it like this, just like that. That exposes the handle. There's a twist tie on the back here. You just untie the twist tie. And if you look at the, uh, the label here, uh, it has some instructions on it. I'd encourage you to read it. Uh, and then how to instructions that are inside of this. So if you take this off, just like this, it can be a little challenging sometimes, but there we go. So inside of this, on the inside, are all the instructions. It tells you how to clean it, it tells you how to adjust it, and it tells you how to use it. So I'd encourage you to look at this when you have a moment. As I said, I'm Will Scott, and I invented the Cyclone Cane. I have spent a lot of my time on uh, canes and crutches, walkers and wheelchairs. I had uh, 17 knee surgeries. And um, like I said, a thousand days on crutches, canes, walkers, and etc. And I have had my own challenges managing using devices like this and crutches and other things out there. And I'm an inventor. I have a number of patents in the marketplace and various technologies. But I wanted to do something better. Uh, canes and crutches haven't changed in, I don't know, hundreds of years or maybe thousands of years for that matter. And because of that, human beings aren't any better for it. We just don't have good technology. So I wanted to make something a lot better and I believe I did. My friends, the doctors and physicians that have looked at this device all believe that this is the best cane that's ever made. And let me tell you why and how. So the first part about any type of cane is uh, you have two really important points. The part that you hold and the part that's on the ground. These are two really, really important factors. And in between all that, you wanna make sure the cane can be adjusted properly. So the middle part here, you have two parts, and all you do to adjust it is you move this up and down. You find the appropriate hole that matches you, and I'll talk about that in a minute. You clip it in, and you're all set. Now, the cyclone cane should fit someone, depending on your arm length, and your leg length, and your body hip length, anywhere between about 5'2 to 6'4. It's going to vary depending on all the things I just mentioned because you know nobody's built the same. But let me get into this. So you've got the handle here, which has a really nice soft grip on top of it. You can see it here. And what's different about this, as compared to this, you can see that it's a lot fatter, a lot bigger. When we have our handles like this, anything like this where you have a handle that is this small, it's designed to be held in your finger. So when I hold this type of handle, you look at it, your fingers grasp it. Um, if you try to put it in the palm of your hand, it's actually painful because it's too narrow. It's too narrow and any type of long-term use and pressure is not going to feel good at all. So we wanted to change that. Because this grip is designed to work in your fingers, it exposes a lot of pressure in your wrist area. So you're not really transferring a lot of energy through the palm of your hand. Now think about pushing something or pushing a grocery cart. When you push something like this, that energy is transferred through your palms and right down the ulna and the radius here. And you have a lot of strength with that. Your triceps and biceps are engaged and you work well like that. Human beings were designed to work that way. So, this device is not. The weak point is gonna be your hands and your wrist. It just doesn't work well, especially long term. And lots of people, like myself, and I was born in 1958, by the way, so you can get an idea how old I am. You know, these just don't work well. So, we designed a device that is designed to work just like you would push a car or a grocery cart or anything else. So, the grip, we call it palm down. So your hand is shaped like a V, if you look at that. That V fits right here, perfectly. And that allows you to transfer all the energy that's coming from the ground, from you pushing on it, right through the ulna and radius here, 
engaging your biceps and your triceps, which is what you want to happen. We want that to happen because it's a natural way that human beings work well. Work well. Now, this device doesn't have all its faults. It's just the wrong tool for the device that they want to use it for. The finger grip is actually very good. Only if you're pulling. If I'm pulling, I'm not going to pull with my palm. I'm going to pull with my fingers. We're designed to pull this way and push this way. We're built that way. But all these devices aren't built that way either. So we have patent pending technology that has taken advantage of the way that human beings work here by this palm down grip. Again, pushing everything right through the all down radius here. So you get your big muscles working here, which is what we want to do. We want that. This gives you the ability to go for long walks. Enjoy yourself. Um, when you really don't feel well, put a lot of weight on the cane, which is what we want to be able to do. So to that end, we're putting a lot of weight on the cane. Inside the soft grip handle, and the soft grip handle is not delicate by any means. It's tough. I can take my fingers, I can poke it like I'm doing right now, and it's, you know, it's very, very tough. You know, but over time, they wear out. We have replacement grips that are available that we can send you, or you just buy another cane. The same thing with the tip here. We'll get to the tip here. This is a softer rubber, and we'll get to the uses of that in a moment. So, the grip again looks like this. On the inside, you have these springs. And you have these springs that move like this. Look at this. It'll actually flex. It gives you a tactile feel. And what we want is when you put your hand on here, we don't want you to have a death grip on this cane all the time. And because of this flexibility, it tells you just the right, right amount of pressure to add to it so you feel comfortable all the time. And so you can have a very light grip on this as opposed to having a death grip on something like this, which you've got to hold it like this. You just grab it, you rest your fingers on it, and because the pressure is going through your ulna and radius here, and not through your fingertips, you can rest easy using this. It's going to be a lot more comfortable. And just like any mathematician or physics major will tell you, is that the more displacement you have, the less pounds per square inch you have, and that equals comfort. So in a case like this, you don't have many, much, much displacement here. You have a very small area. We want lots of displacement so that you're very comfortable. And the entire load is spread over the palm of your hand. Got it? The next thing here is we go down here. We look at this and you see this odd shape. But it's not as odd as you think. So let me tilt it the right way so we can put it in perspective. If I hold it like this so this part is level, you can see here that if I draw a straight line, right through the center of here, it goes right to the center of the grip. That's what we want. We want balance. Now this device is what we call an actively balanced cane. We want active balance. That means when you're using it, actually putting pressure on it, it's going to be neutral balance. It's not going to move forward. It's not going to want to go backwards. It's not going to, want to move sideways either direction. We want neutral balance when we're moving it. These devices, like these, are the complete opposite of that. If you've got a cane that is straight here and the handle is sticking out one way or the other, it is passively balanced. In other words, when it's not being used or, or, or any type of pressure is being placed on it, it's going to be balanced. That's not what we want. You don't really care if it's balanced when you're not using it. So what happens here is, as soon as I put pressure on it, if the handle is facing forward, the, hands, handle, the whole cane is, is going to want to shift forward. If it's facing backwards, it's going, it's going to want to shift backwards. It's going to want to shift backwards. We don't want that because what happens there is you can't actively use the cane. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is when you put the cane on the ground to use it, you want to be able to put pressure on it from the moment you start and you're walking through the gate. What you don't want is to put the cane in front of you in a flat position and have to walk to the cane. I don't want you to have to do that. The Dynamo Cyclone Cane is very cool because what happens here is because of this bend I just described, you're able to put the cane down and know that the balance point is right through your hand at all times. And it's going to be neutrally balanced. It's not going to want to shift forward or backwards or side to side. You are in control of this cane at all times. And that's the difference between an active and a passively balanced cane. 
this is better, significantly better than anything else you've ever used. Going down the cane a little farther, you see this little junction point here. On the back of it, what I have is an adjustment point. And if I click this out, right here, you'll see that it's highlighted in red on one side and highlighted on red on the other side. That means that it's disengaged. It's disengaged. And if I took it out, you would find there's a pin. And that pin has to go through uh, the lower part. So this is moving right now. And as soon as I click it, and there's a line here, a white line. So I line it up with the white line here. And I push it down. And it clicks in. If you notice, you no longer see that red. That means it's engaged. Why is this adjustment put on the back? Well, I wanted it to look cool. I want you to walk out and go have a good time. I don't want everything showing. I wanted a nice, clean look to this whole thing. And that's what we've got here. If you notice, you don't have any really sharp edges at all on the front of the can. It's very soft, and it's got an anodized finish. And it, by the way, it's made of aluminum, high-grade aluminum, very, very strong. And this device will hold 300 pounds of pressure on it. Not 300 pounds of weight, but it's even better because, like I said, 300 pounds of pressure you can put on this cane. You'll never be able to put 300 pounds of pressure on this cane. So it will hold you and last you a long time, this frame will. But as I said before, I want it to look very good. And part of looking very good is coming up with a custom design. It's got a D shape. If you look at the design of the shaft here, it's a D shaped design. This D-shaped design is mathematically stronger than some of the other circular designs and even the square designs in the marketplace. So we have a patent pending on this also. So adjustment's very easy. You only have to adjust one point. All you're concerned about is this. And how do you adjust it? All you do is you straighten your arm out when you're standing. And wherever the cane falls around your wrist, right here, that's where you're going to click it. So you move this adjustment point here, because what we're trying to do is get about a 15 degree bend, a 15 degree bend in your elbow or so. A lot of people are used to using these canes and they have these huge bends and you see them all the time at the grocery store walking in the street and their arm is bent like this and it's, it's not good. That's not a, a point of strength for that individual. Your good strength area is between an area that's around 10 to 20 degree range, somewhere in that range, where you're gonna have that maximum uh, strength without having to experience a great deal of fatigue over a long term of walking. So you want that 10 to 20 degree range when you're making that adjustment. All you have to do is take your wrist break here, put it in the middle of the grip, you're all good. Let's go down to the bottom. Remember when we started this conversation, I mentioned the two really important parts, the part you're holding and the part that's touching the ground. And I just told you that the cane itself is designed to be actively balanced, so you can put pressure on it all the time. Well, the next thing is, is that friction and gravity with our cane is your friend, or any device, really. But unfortunately, devices like this are not designed to be your friend. And what do I mean by that? When we walk with any cane, we're gonna take a step and we're gonna put it at an angle on the ground. Well, unfortunately, this tip is not designed to articulate. In other words, move forward and backwards. It's not designed. Well, we don't need a lot of articulation. We only need this much. We only need about 20 degrees either direction, maybe less than that, 17 degrees. But what happens here, if I have, like you're seeing here, I can put my finger underneath the front of this. That means that my 220 pounds is all being displaced on this teeny tiny area, this tip, and not even the whole tip here, the front or the back or the sides. This is not good. We want maximum displacement and we want friction. In other words, we want contact with the ground. This is the cyclone tip. And the cyclone tip technically could have some of the same challenges, but we did some really cool stuff. Number one is we made it bigger, not gigantic, but as things go, we're at least a few times bigger than a standard cane tip here. And as you see here, you know, um, there are veins inside of here. You can see them coming all the way to the end. And it confuses me to no end when I see things like this. You see a cane like this that has these concentric circles inside. Now why does it bother me? It bothers me because water does not compress at all. 
So if this surface were covered with in water, those veins could potentially gather the water inside of them and cause hydroplaning. This is why car tires or your even shoes, your gym shoes you wear, have the veins that go all the way out to the edges so that water can be displaced and stick to the ground, which is what we've done here, as you can see. And we've done a good job on this product. So this product is also softer. It's a softer one than this product here. And why is that? If the product is too hard, it's going to slide more and it's not going to flex as much. So uh, you, again, let's look at the car tire analogy. If you have some really, really hard tar tires, yeah, they'll last forever, but they don't handle very well at all. We want it to handle very well. Safety is more important than longevity. You can buy these and all you do is pull the, this just pulls right off and you stick a new one on. And typically, a uh, cane tip will last someone, uh, with a typical person, you know, up to a year before they have to replace it and you just get another one. They're inexpensive, you can get another one and throw it on the bottom of your cane. The next thing here that is a novel design are these slits, and I'll use this one here. You'll see these slits all over the side of the cyclone. Well, those slits are designed. These are not by accident, and they're not there just to look pretty. These are there to make sure that when I put the cane tip down, it flexes so that the cane tip stays flat to the surface, and that's what we want. I want it to stay flat as long as possible. The flatter it is, the more grip I have and the safer you are. I have fallen so many times using a cane or a crutch, I can't count the number of times because of lack of grip. And I wanted a device that gave me the freedom to go anywhere. There is no way I could walk with this on a damp soccer field. My kids play soccer. And I can tell you, and this is actually my real cane, I've had this, I don't know, um, 25 years or something like that. You know, uh, yeah, this is it. And I can tell you there are times when this tip has been five inches in the grass and I had to stop what I was doing. I couldn't go any further. I don't want that to happen. So we have a larger displacement tip. It flexes, it's softer, it's gonna keep you safe. You can walk in the sand, you can walk in the mud, you just rinse the device off. This is aluminum, it doesn't rust. It doesn't rattle. And that drives me crazy. I hated walking into a room and they, they heard me coming 25 feet away because my cane's rattling when I walk into a room. You don't have that issue with a Dynamo, any Dynamo. We make high quality premium devices and these are the best in the industry. So overall, recap, palm down grip, which is fantastic. Active balancing, which is going to give you control to put as much pressure on this device anytime you want. Easy adjustment, and I showed you how to do that, and a tip that articulates that's soft enough to stick to the ground and be there when you want it. In our opinion, this is the best cane ever made, and I work with 50 orthopedic surgeons to make sure of it. They've analyzed it and looked at it, and we've sold tens of thousands of these devices so far, and growing. If you haven't tried a Dynamo Cyclone cane, and you haven't given one to someone you love, you're not doing them justice. Give it a shot. Take a look at it.